So cool. It's quite cool, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. so, so. No, it's not cool. <laughs> yeah, I've got an echo in there. Yes not cool we were so close have you got headphones that maybe you could put in we were so close to it being perfect um is that better How's that? Hmm. can you hear me okay the echo is gone from the listener point of view is it all right from your point of view Lamorna? yeah i can just about hear you oh yeah you've got an echo haven't you Oh my goodness, this happened yesterday and we tried headphones. Do you have any headphones you could put in? Yeah, let me just try and get those set up now. <laughs> Always the way, isn't it? Don't worry, On, I've tried everything. There's just no good formula here. We tried headphones yesterday and it was just as bad and so we took them off anyway. Um, <laughs> in all the meantime, part of right? Chat amongst yourselves. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, let's just do that. I'll turn this down. Okay, right. That's definitely looking better on here. Okay, let's see. Happiness is no echo on Crowdcast. It okay, really can is. You hear me? I, I can hear you. I'm really good, but I just want to double check because yesterday. Um, I heard perfect from Charlie, but when I played it back, it had an echo. Yeah. It was really hard to listen to. But let, yeah, let's check that. How's that going now? That's fine for me. Brilliant. We might solve this. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. <laughs> so small things in life. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. Small things in life give you such joy, isn't it? Like having no echo in your life. <laughs> um. Okay. Lamorna, thank you so much for your time and coming on another door. Um, your story really fascinated me because when you sent me the email, it was an amazing story, but you said, I'm now doing something that I actually hated and my reinvention came from that. And I thought, that's brilliant. I've got to investigate this because we often hear people saying, follow your passion. What do you love? You know, that's how you found your first step, but yours was quite unique. So I want to get stuck into that. But before we do, just maybe give us a quick introduction and then we will um, chat more about what you're doing now. Uh, okay, so my name is Lamorna Hollingsworth. I am a certified nutritionist and personal trainer, and I mo tend to work mostly with women who are looking to ditch the diets, improve their health, and I also do some corporate work as well with businesses who are looking to improve their wellness offerings. Yes. And even just looking at the work that you do made me think, oh, my goodness, I've got to sort this out. I, I bet you're getting lots of requests now from people who are like, OK, lockdown is no excuse anymore. I've overeaten, overindulged, need to sort this out. So I bet you're uh, <laughs> you're helping a lot of people right now. So let's go back to the moment that your first reinvention that you talked about on that email how are you doing what you're doing now what how did that happen for you it, it all sprung from a bit of a disaster actually i was working for a i, I had a corporate job a corporate life I was very happy or so i thought and uh i uh, decided um come on I realised that um, I, was, I was doing really well, but what happened was I think I was doing too well and there were certain people that didn't like it. And I got pushed out. I got pushed out of the business that I was working for. Uh, it was a male-dominated industry. I won't mention names, but uh, it was awful. It was really awful. And it was just before I was about to do a big, big charity event to raise money, all in the name of the company as well. So I had this big uh, charity boxing fight. Uh, I was a pair, one of a pair of women who were going to be boxing for charity, white collar boxing fights. And uh, I didn't even know if uh, I was going to have to fit the bill for the table, which was £5,000, which was meant to be picked up on the company. And I left uh, shortly after because they gave me they gave me no choice. 
and it was a company that didn't have didn't have a HR department I could go to. I could either kick up a fuss and lose any chance of being re-employed within the industry because it's a very small industry you know everybody knows everybody i didn't want to be uh, seen as a troublemaker uh or just just go which is what i i did uh and i was spiraled into depression low mood um i couldn't get out of bed i was given antidepressants which didn't really do very much for me and i was i took six months of nine months maybe of just trying to figure out what i wanted to do with my life and one thing i knew i did like doing was uh helping people teaching mm -hmm. people and i liked um yeah taking people on a journey which i discovered through bits and pieces you know i'd, I'd done in the past and i also knew that i didn't want to be sat at a desk for the rest of my life i didn't want to be sat in the car doing you know commutes for hours and hours on end i wanted to be more active so i decided even though i don't like exercise to become a personal trainer now some might say this is a there's a female logic thing going on here uh but i in my head i thought well if i'm in a gym i'm gonna have to be fit i'm gonna have to be healthy i'm gonna have to exercise i was sort of constructing this environment where i was going to be have, forcing myself do to do workouts and, and this kind of thing uh so that's how i ended up becoming a personal trainer and i did my training personal training course it's only six weeks it's a very short course with all these you know muscly 18 year olds there's a few women in there but <laughs> definitely not as old as me because i was in my early 30s by that point and um that's how i became a personal trainer <laughs> I, I love that, that you just hated something and thought, right, I've got to just do something about it. So a couple of things, really interesting. This piece about what was going on for you at that moment in time in corporate, I think a lot of people will probably resonate, you know, that you're sitting in your seat, wherever it is, might be still work from home, might be coming back in the office. And you suddenly got these feelings of like, I'm just not comfortable anymore. Something's happened interesting you said it's because you're doing well you know sometimes it comes from so frustration well. yeah. that yeah you're not doing well so many dynamics going in organizations but you take it in internally and you try and process it is kind of irrelevant what people are thinking whether you're doing well whether you're not not doing as well as you want to so you're feeling like okay it just isn't feeling comfortable anymore. And it came to a moment where you're like, right, I'm going to have to own this. And as you say, you know, it was very unpleasant. But what was the moment that made you think I'm going to embrace fitness? Because that's, I think, an intriguing part for people, because it's very easy just to then just feel low. And it's really hard to get yourself in a place to take action. Yeah, well, I know from, you know, it's, it's well known that exercise is good for mental health which mm. was something that i was struggling with at the time i had i mean i had a hatred of exercise from school being forced mm. to run across country and always being picked last for, for the netball and the hockey team so i had these really negative um memories of what exercise meant for me but i mm. knew there were some things that i had tried in the past um which i just did for fun like i did a tough mudder you seen heard of these these obstacle for course fun places. hang on a minute you did that for fun well that's you know, the one where you go through mud up. and get electrocuted right, here's, another it's another example of me <laughs> constructing something i like the idea of getting free beer at the end on the finish oh, line okay <laughs> and again i thought if i sign up with some friends it's not timed it's not serious it's just you know jumping <laughs> over some obstacles getting a bit muddy you know <laughs> um so so yeah, that was kind of how I ended up with that. But the way I just like to describe essentially what you've, you've just said, you know, there was an unhappiness. Mm. Um, I didn't know where I was going to be going, but I like to describe it as the job that I was in. It filled my bank account, but it left my soul empty. And I was just chasing numbers. I was chasing mm. numbers for the company I was working for. Mm. I was chasing numbers for a bank account. Um, I was chasing numbers so that I could afford to get the nice car. Um, which, you know, because everyone, all the sales execs, we had nice cars, Porsches. I bought a Mercedes, an SLK, sports car, convertible, red leather, really nice. Now I drive a transit van. So, <laughs> um, does it have red leather though? <laughs> um, so, yeah, finding this sort of uh, this draw of, of exercise of fitness, it was more because I knew of the benefits it would be due to me sort of the short term, the, mm. the longer term benefits, I, I didn't want to be sort of stuck in the nine to five kind of 
mm. you know, Groundhog Day, where you're dreading, uh, you know, you're dreading Sunday nights because Monday means to start the new week, work week. What gets to Wednesday and you're already thinking, oh, it's the middle of the week. Oh, Thursday tomorrow. And then it's Friday. You're chasing those Fridays. And essentially you're wishing your life away. Uh, so the idea of becoming a personal trainer just sort of meant that I could break free from that. And of course it came with its other, you know, other, a whole different yeah. war game and things that I had to deal with. But it was, for me, it was breaking free of the the corporate life that, that kind of you're expected to do. Yeah. And that's the important thing, isn't it? It's, I think if you've got to that space and you know, you need some change in your life, sometimes it's easy to know what you don't want anymore. Like it's a good place to start. If you're just so aware of, I definitely just don't want these couple of things. So that's it, it's off the table, I'm just not gonna do that. But you might have to compromise other things to to not get that. That's the point, isn't it? There's no, I don't think there's any golden ticket. I don't think there's anything that, you know, people are gonna come along and it's all this dream job where everything's fantastic. You're always gonna have compromises. But as you say, you found it through knowing what you didn't want and then building it from there. Um, what was it like, though, to take that first step? Did it feel like how did it feel to take the first step out of corporate and into this new space? It was scary. Really scary, but exciting at the same time. And something that I say to my the, the people that I work with is that when you think about what happens? What, how do you feel when you're scared of something? You get a dry mouth, you get butterflies in your tummy, maybe your heart rate goes up, maybe you start sweating a little bit. But also, what happens when you're excited? Pretty mm. much all the same things. So I like to sort of sometimes when I'm feeling scared, I actually have to check myself and say, am I feeling scared or am I feeling excited? Mm. Or maybe I am feeling scared, but I'm also feeling excited. Because when we hold, we grasp that feeling of fear and say, oh, you know, it's too scary. I could never do that. Actually, we're, we're potentially misinterpreting the signals that we're getting. And we're maybe blocking ourselves and taking ourselves away from something that actually we could be finding exciting, could give us so many opportunities if we're just to kind of look at it in a different way and to be able to overcome that feeling of, of, of fear, you know, the dry mouth, the heart rate, you know, the, the what if. Yeah. So, yeah, it's scary. <laughs> That's such a good description because I do think it's what um, it puts people off. People hold themselves back because they've got this feeling and they think they can't step out. What what is the happy startups are listening? They've put, oh yeah, excitement. Oh, that's the thing that you've just described an excitement when you're anxious but you're excited all at the same time. <laughs> um, so I think. Um, as you describe, it's about uh, feeling it. It's the good old book. It's the book that we all reference, feeling the fear and doing it anyway, because the fear isn't gonna go away. There's not gonna be a day when you get up and not have fear, but there is gonna be a day that you get up and think, well, I'm just gonna do it anyway. Yeah, I think we've lost your video, but, um, I, and you went a little bit echoey, but Ooh. I think the gist of what you were saying, asking me is that, Sometimes you're going to feel the fear, but you're just going to go for the excitement and do it anyway. And I would definitely uh, agree with that. It's embracing these scary feelings within us gets easier the more you do it. And we, for me anyway, I've started to find it's a mindset change from yeah. I can't do that. That's not uh, some, that, that's too scary. How could I do that? But that won't work because all of these objections that you come up with if you flip your mindset 360 or 180 to, <laughs> upside down, <laughs> then you can end up having, how can I? Yes, it's gonna be difficult. Yes, okay, I can't move it to Portugal. I don't speak the language. Well, oh, why can't I learn? Oh, mm. yeah. okay. oh, well, I don't know anybody there. Well, I can meet people. You know, you start kind of having this more progressive and growth mindset is the official term instead of a fixed mindset. So it actually opens up so many choices and opportunities, then you sort of can think actually what are the pros and cons instead of just shutting down these ideas. Um, and yeah. sometimes you go for them, sometimes you don't, you, you know, it's, it, but then you've got the choice and you know you've thought about it properly, rather than looking at other people thinking, wow, they've got such a cool life. Wow, they've lived abroad. Wow, they've traveled for 12 months. Wow, they've bought a double-decker bus. Wow, they've left <laughs> 60 grand 
paying a year a job for something that this they how do they do that they've embraced they've embraced the the fear and they've done it anyway yeah and i think that's an important message of um we see people doing things and we think yeah but it's all right for them they haven't got the same struggle as what i've got or we kind of give ourselves a nice way out or an excuse that we get very comfortable with um and so we can tell ourselves a kind of different story about what's happening, that they can do it and that we can't do it. So I think that's probably part of it as well. So um, so you embraced personal training and you took that first step. How, I'm sure you had wobble days. You had days of, oh my God, what am I doing? How do you deal with those kind of days? Do I keep losing you? Oh, let me just come back. Have I lost you? I think the way to deal with challenging days is just to focus on the task at hand. And for me, luckily, when I was personal training, I was dealing with, well, not dealing with, that sounds terrible. (laughs) I had to deal with these (laughs) terrible clients who wanted me to help them get fit and help them. Uh, How dare they? How dare they want to work with you? (laughs) I I had amazing clients and I still do. Uh, But actually what I found was on those tough days, the reasons that they would be tough is because I could I I felt that I wasn't giving enough. I couldn't mm. fix all of their problems, yeah. which then led me into thinking, well, how can I? What's the, what's the next uh, challenge for me? What's the next adventure for me? And how can I support my clients and get them better results? Because I'm seeing this person two, one, two, three times mm. a week in the gym. They're working really hard, lifting really heavy weights, but they're not losing weight. Mm. Take a good example. One losing weight what, what are they doing with their food and i couldn't advise them personal trainers yeah. aren't trained in nutrition we get like an hour's training in fact gps have less than five hours training on nutrition so oh, wow. i thought you know what i need to do something about this because i can go onto mr google and say is fasting good work for weight loss should should i go into keto a keto diet for weight loss <laughs> you'll get six uh, six opinions saying this six opinions saying that i didn't want to give my clients false information so i thought yeah. you know what i need to retrain again i need to do my nutritionist uh, qualifications and exams so that's what yeah. I did. and that's what i love about the story you're now evolving you keep evolving yeah. with your clients and in the space and how you're feeling about something and that's the point isn't it you don't have to have all the answers the first time you step out but you mm-hmm. have to have this mindset that I'm going to grow with it. I'm going to keep developing. I'm going to be in this space now. Another point you made really interesting about being good enough. And I think um, certainly people I've worked with have not started something themselves because they've said, yeah, but who am I to do it? I I, I don't have the answers. I feel like I ca- I'm worried I can't help people. and I'm not good enough. Um, how do you overcome that? How do you say, yeah, but I'm going to try or get into that space of being good enough? That is a hard one. And that's, for me personally, it's an ongoing battle because it, it's the self-doubt, isn't it? It's the insecurity. And I think for most of the people, they do find that they have a lack of confidence around themselves. It's just the... The way that we're built yeah and yeah. i feel that women specifically struggle with this more i experienced this from an early age because i am a university dropout so i did my year at university and decided it wasn't for me so i i had i've carried that since the age of 19 that i didn't finish my degree um oh, wow. and i think all well, reminding yourself of why you're doing what you're doing when you if you're working in a service-based industry like i am taking those little gem moments those jewels where people say oh wow you know you've made such a difference to me or i come off a client call and they're like you know what i'm feel so much happier you know the beginning of the call they were in tears i don't make them cry by the way <laughs> but you know sometimes people just stress yeah. and they're like you know i really want to do more exercise i really want to eat more healthily and this week there's just been a nightmare and you know they're in tears and and we work through it you know we we get over it and then by the end of it i'm like 
I'm buzzing, you know, because I've been able to help that person in so many ways, you know, not just by telling them to eat more broccoli and kale and go and do some more steps, you know, I've really kind of got to the knot of the problem and we've worked through it. And uh, so taking that job satisfaction when it comes and remembering it, and actually I started doing this more recently, but um, almost like writing, making a list after, um, of these little wins after the client calls because I can't remember the details of the conversation I had you know, two weeks ago. So having these little wins that then I can tell people on social media or I can remind that person when I speak to them next, you know, last time, um, this is this is what you said, uh, or this is what we, we discussed together. Um, that really, really helps. And having that, like you said, open-mindedness mm. to, to grow rather than something, well, this is the way that I, I, these yeah. facts that I know, and this is the way that I'm just going to go, and I'm just going to have a sort of very narrow focus. Um, being open to to being wrong, and being open to to develop yourself further. Um, I think the things that you can do f- from a practical sense um, to help move forward, so that you have less of those days where you're just like, what the am I doing here? <laughs> don't know what I'm doing. How can I expect people to pay me money for something when I haven't got a clue? You know, because you start to value yourself and what you can do for other people. Um, and they value, obviously, they value it too. So it's um, a work in progress. I absolutely love that. And I like that you, that, that open to learning, knowing that you don't have to have all the answers from day one and you can grow with whatever's happening. So important. Um, and I do think it's a blocker, especially if you've had corporate life or you've had a role because you're probably in a different mindset where you have to have all the answers or you have to have a beautiful PowerPoint or an amazing Gantt chart before you can even take one step. You know, we're pre-programmed that that's the way to do it. Yeah. And suddenly in self-employment world, in entrepreneur world, whatever world you're stepping into that's different, it's a completely different mindset. And that's the work, isn't it? More than anything, I think... Sometimes people go, oh, the work is setting up a website. That's what I need to do. But actually the work is internal and that's what you're sort of describing, which I think is really powerful. Mm, yeah, well, and it's both. And I think being self-employed, it's so hard because you, I found, I, I was always envious of the people who went to university at 18. And obviously, as I said before, this sort of, it's, it, it's something that I've had to carry for a long time that I left mm. and I dropped out and I didn't go back because that was originally the plan. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah. You know, I chose a degree. I chose A-levels that were completely unrelated, which doesn't matter, but because I didn't know. And I thought, how do people know what they want to do? Yeah. You know, people who at 16 know what A-levels they want to choose because they want to be a doctor. You know, and my, my mind was const- constantly blowing because, you know, you know, I was at 30 and I was like, I still don't know. Maybe I just will never know, you know, and I'll just kind of go through the motions of going to work and getting paid. And and when I started learning into, about nutrition, I thought, you know what, this is it. This is, yeah. I love food. I love cooking food. I love eating food. Um, I love trying new foods. So I suddenly found my thing and it was, it was so <laughs> amazing because I just, for all those years, like, 15 years I just thought you know what I just that that happens to other people and finally the decisions that I'd made to kind of step away from corporate you know to to go through the personal training qualifications to kind of work with people I'd finally got there but it was it was just a longer process it wasn't like a flash of inspiration that suddenly came to me it it was a gradual you know gradual a gradual process I think that is such a good story and that's the point of reinvention. It isn't one thing. It's not reinvent yourself once. It's reinvent and keep changing, keep adapting, seeing the opportunity. And even what you're describing as, you know, leaving university, it's still, that's still reinvention because you were one thing and now it's a new world. And how do you make the best of it? That's the key to it, keeping on evolving. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I think it's... um, it has so many different elements that I'm sure people will resonate with. Um, where can people find you if they want more information about what you do? Uh, you can go to Facebook or Instagram. Uh, if you type in Lamorna Fitness on Facebook, 
uh, or underscore Lamorna on Instagram. And I have a group which is called Breaking Bad Eating Habits, which is a free group. And I post loads of good content in there, which uh, around health, recipes, uh, fitness, exercise tips. It's not just about eating habits. Um, yeah, these are the main three places. Sounds amazing. I might have to just check that out because, um, yes, I've definitely got myself into some very bad habits over lockdown. So I'm going to be checking that out. Thank you so much for your time and sharing your story. It's been brilliant. Thanks, guys, for watching. Um, catch up soon. Take yeah. care. Good luck with the rest of the festival. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.